What do you think would be harder? One hour in the world's quietest room or one hour in the world's loudest room? Okay, maybe I'm being dramatic for the intro, but when you actually turn on the sound in this room, things get crazy. <clears throat> Let's begin. So I packed my bags, put on the nicest outfit I could find, if you know, you know, and found myself back where I started. Orfield Laboratories. What can I do for you? <laughs> Steve. This is Steve. Steve Orfield. Sorcerer of sound, the founder of these rooms, and possibly the villain of Stranger Things Season 4. I dress now and you dress I know, <laughs> there it is. You're a jinx. Well, I have no idea what a jinx is, but I'll take that as a compliment. I've got a bag full of Cheeto Puffs in a dream. A few weeks ago, I attempted to break the world record for the longest time spent in the world's quietest room. 45 minutes. And after one hour of the most intense silence the Earth has to offer, Steve told me that it's not actually hard to stay in there. And I could probably stay in there for days if I wanted to. But the loudest room, the loudest room is different. So Steve said if I wanted a real challenge, you'd play some chamber music in the reverb room. I don't know what that is. After an intense Google session, I learned that chamber music is simply the classics. Bach, Mozart, and Pitbull on the weekends. And the reason for it is because chamber music is so precise, so delicate, that the reverb room reflects each note and distorts it so much that the music eventually just becomes an awful, never-ending screeching noise. So yeah, then we went to the room. Come on into the reverb room. Alright. A reverb room is a room that's pretty close to 100% reflective. And so no matter where you are in a reverb room, it doesn't get any louder or any quieter. It's a perfectly diffuse room, which means the sound is the same everywhere. For context of loudness, whispering is about 30 decibels. Thunder, 120 decibels. Now let's say you go to a rock concert. You probably know this by now, but the front row is about 150 decibels. But in a reverb room, that noise just reflects. Like, listen to this. I'm no scientist, but I'm pretty sure that the room with the fiberglass wedges echoes a little bit less. So unlike being outside where the louder you talk, the more you'll hear, in, in a reverb room, the louder you talk, the worse it is. With that in mind, Steve and I developed a game. I'm gonna yell at him from across the room, and his theory is that he won't even be able to understand me due to the reflections of sound. Steve, are you hiding any tumor organs in the basement? I'm sure he said something about Answer the question, Steve. I thought that was pretty funny, until we heard actual screeching coming from the b below us. <laughs> Steve's got a battle of his own, but I've got some, I've got one as well. There was no more running from it. It's time to see how long I can last in the world's loudest room. And unlike the quietest room, it doesn't have to be pitch black for it to work. I brought in the largest speakers I could rent, and Steve doesn't even think I'll last 10 minutes in here at full volume. Brian seems like a gentle fellow, so we'll have to test this. But what does he know? He actually knows everything about this. this is literally his life's work. Regardless, I spent 30 minutes in the anechoic chamber leading up to this challenge, so now my ears are ultra sensitized to the reflections in the reverb room. Let's do this. I'm gonna speak as quietly as possible because we are in the world's loudest room, and if I speak loudly, it will echo. Learn that from my boy Steve. <laughs> I'm gonna find those Demogorgons. And upon Steve's recommendation, we're listening to Bach, who famously said, bring me my coffee before I turn into a goat which is a really weird thing to say. So, yeah. Here we go. Oh my gosh. I just damaged my ears. That was the wrong song. Holy smokes. That was loud. Yeah, as you can see here, I actually have a physical reaction so intense to the sound that my primitive instincts kick in. I, I physically, I just sprint away. I just run. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I'm not embarrassed, but I am gonna try again. I found the correct music. <sighs> here we go. As I was sitting in this chair, I wondered to myself, can noise make a dude die? Yeah, it can. Apparently the European Space Agency has a, a sound weapon that if they wanted to, could it, it could put you in a coffin. Let's put it that way. In this moment, I'm thinking three things. This music sounds awful. I didn't know rib cages could vibrate until now. And I can't believe I thought the world's quietest room actually gave me real problems. My ears just started making noises. <laughs> what the heck? Well, 
I look like I'm doing just fine. A lot of people don't know this, but if you have an iPhone, you can check how loud you listen to stuff. My average volume is 85 decibels. It turns out that the amount of sound you can get off an iPhone in America, you can't get in Europe. They don't sell that iPhone in Europe because the Europeans won't tolerate it. Probably because they're saving all that noise for their sound weapons? <laughs> That's none of my business. So here you can see me internally trying to remember why I do things like this. And ultimately, it comes down to one reason. And that is to have Dr. Phil become my legal grandfather. You know by now. His agent won't let us ask him. I recently met him in person and was too nervous to ask. His agent actually emailed and said that she likes my videos and agreed to let us meet with him if we pass him in subscribers. This war is ruthless, but we are gaining on Dr. Phil rapidly. Join the- join the battle. At this point, I was trying to not cover my ears because I thought it made me look weak, but I couldn't help it. And then I realized, I don't think anyone on the planet thinks not covering your ears in a 120 decibel room is cool. 120 decibels of noise. Ryan won't want to be in there too long. It's the same volume. It's the same volume everywhere I go. Oh my gosh. Okay. One minute in this room has destroyed me. But what would happen if you spent 10 years in here, Steve? You'd have significant hearing loss. I mean, you'd, you wouldn't have any hearing left to, to speak of. And it wouldn't take 10 years. That's good to know, Steve. Good to know. After one hour in the world's quietest room, I couldn't help but just sit and enjoy the sounds of nature outside. And as I'm sitting here experiencing actual sensory overload, I can't help but long for the same thing. I just want to eat my Cheeto puffs outside next to a tree and hear a bird scream. And even though this music is beautiful, I'm realizing that even the prettiest of noises can sound horrible in the wrong environment. I lasted three minutes and 37 seconds in here. Yeah, uh, I think I would much rather prefer the, the quiet one. I physically could not stay still. I am going to a doctor. Turns out I didn't damage my ears, thank goodness. And Steve never did tell me what was screeching in that basement. So I guess we'll just have to wait for season four of Stranger Things to find out if my theory is true. Regardless, I think I'll stick to normal rooms from now on. Normal rooms with normal volumes. But it's not every day you can say you're sitting down under a tree with Cheeto dust on your fingers in a suit you bought from Amazon to impress a 73-year-old sound sorcerer after he let you stay in the world's quietest and loudest room in hopes of passing a celebrity doctor and subscribers on the internet. Thanks for watching!